Right. So, um, yeah, so my name's Aaron. Uh, I am, at least for the next week, a uh, postdoc in John Marioni's group at uh, the CIUK, uh, Council of Research UK, Cambridge. Um, and um, here I'll be talking about some of the work we've been doing off, uh, off this uh, Bioconductor HCA grant. Um, so what I've mostly been doing is developing uh, a, a, sort of the basic infrastructure required to get our packages to run on large single cell data. Uh, so the first thing that um, immediately came to mind was the um, need for some more efficient nearest neighbor detection methods. Uh, so there's a couple of packages available in R in CRAN more generally for, for uh, detecting nearest neighbors, uh, but they're quite outdated, well, they're quite old and they rely on some fairly uh, classic algorithms. Um, so what we wanted, what basically what I did here was I uh, sort of slapped together a whole bunch of the more uh, a whole bunch of different algorithms um, for both exact nearest neighbor searches and approximate nearest neighbor searches. Uh, and then I wrapped them uh, into, a, into a, basically a single framework uh, where you can just um, change a param object and you can get different, uh, you can use different algorithms to compute uh, a nearest neighbor's result. So for example, here uh, we have a find KNN method. So this is a S, uh, an S4 generic, you give it some data uh, and then uh, depending on which, uh, BN param, so biasy neighbors param object you supply, uh, you can change the type of algorithm that uh, that is used to compute that uh, nearest neighbor search. Uh, so this this has a couple of benefits uh, for package developers that rely on uh, performing KNN searches. Uh, so basically, all they have to do is to you know use find KNN uh, and do their nearest neighbor search, uh, and then the user uh, they can pass in from the user a BN param object, uh, and that means that the user can tune the uh, the desired uh, accuracy versus speed ratio as they would, uh, as they find appropriate. Uh, so the annoy and the HNSW uh, libraries are particularly fast, um, being approximate libraries, uh, and they work, uh, they work uh, quite, quite quickly for, um, uh, uh, for large data. So for example, for the, um, uh, for, for one of the M, M NIST data sets, uh, 700,000 points and 700, five, 500 dimensions or something, uh, I think it takes a minute with a noise param to search for the first 30 neighbors. Um, so that's that's quite that's quite snappy. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, so basically, we have this we we have this interchangeable system that makes it very easy for both users and developers to incorporate uh, 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 you know a variety of nearest neighbors nearest neighbor search algorithms into their packages. Uh, we also provide support for, for pre-built indices, so uh, you can build the index once and use it multiple times with, for example, uh, in this example here, I'm, I'm building the index once from this sum data. I might want to find uh, KNNs from that data, uh, and I can also query uh, some other data with that same index, um, so I don't have to waste time building the index again. Uh, and, th and this is important because the ability to build an index allows us to perform parallelization via BIOC parallel. So again, this is integrating with this uh, existing bioconductor uh, infrastructure in order to uh, achieve scalability. Uh, so for example, again, I, I might want to use find, uh, find KNN to find some uh, KNNs from uh, this uh, data set here. And I can split this across, across multiple cores on the same machine or across multiple workers with snow param or indeed across you know, uh, um, you know, multiple cluster nodes if I, if I was so inclined. Um, uh, so again, basically that works seamlessly with uh, existing functions that already use BIOC parallel. Uh, so you can just plug in and play and it'll all work. Um, more, more sort of bespoke features, so there's support for range finding. So instead of wanting to find the K nearest neighbors, you might want to find the um, or neighbors within a certain distance, um, uh, so you can do that as well if you if you wish, um, and you can search on the Manhattan distance instead of the Euclidean distance if, if you so desire. Uh, so um, yeah, basically this allows us to uh, do all our nearest neighbor searching needs uh, within Bioconductor packages. Uh, so I've already used this in SCADA and SCRAN, so um, it's it's already part of the workflows. Uh, uh, if you're using SCADA and SCRAN, you're already probably using uh, biasy neighbors under the hood. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, before I move on, um, a shout out to James Melville, uh, who is the developer of the RCPB HNSW package in CRAN. Uh, so it was sort of at my request that he pushed that onto CRAN. So that's how uh, the HNSW algorithm is supported now. Um, 
Okay, so that's that's biased in neighbors, and th yeah, this is oh, damn. Um, whoops. Uh, so that's okay. So that's already. So that's yeah. So if you if you if you follow this link there, that's already on Bioconductor. Uh, the next package that um, that I've been working on is BIOC Singular, and this does much the same thing, except that uh, instead of going for nearest neighbor searches, it does uh, the singular value decomposition. So again, we've got a single S4 generic run SVD, and just by switch, uh, okay, just by switching out the BS param, um, uh, so yeah, these BN things are meant to be BS, just by uh, BIOC Singular param. Um, uh, uh, just by switching in and out this BS param object, you can change the algorithm that you use to do your singular value decomposition. So you can either do an exact sing, uh, SVD or you can use a, a IRLBA um, and to do an approximate SVD with varying levels of accuracy, or you can use a randomized SVD via the, via the RSVD package. Uh, and again, again, this is for uh, uh, both for developers and for users because package developers can simply call run SVD or, or, or um, its counterpart run PCA, um, and all they have to do is to allow the user to pass in a BS param object, and then the user can again decide whether or not they want to trade off speed uh, versus accuracy. Um, so some of the few, some of the things we've been doing to uh, sort of automatically improve efficiency is to automatically compute the cross product for fat or fat or thin matrices, and you can again using the param object control how this cross product is computed. So uh, basically, how fat does a matrix have to be before you compute, uh, before you decide to compute the cross product rather than just using it directly in your uh, singular value decomposition. Um, uh, additional features include. Um, uh, the uh, construction of these deferred and low rank matrix representations. So the deferred matrix uh, is basically a delayed arrayed backend uh, where uh, uh, instead of explicitly centering and scaling the matrix, you, de you, well, you defer the centering and scaling so that you can make use of sparsity during matrix multiplication events. Uh, and this can result in a, uh, so for example, for um, uh, some of the mutual nearest neighbors batch correction methods that Stephanie was talking about earlier, uh, simply by using a deferred matrix, you can improve the speed of the entire correction by tenfold. Um, so that's, uh, that's quite an impressive, um, that's quite an impressive uh, benefit. Uh, we, can, we also provide low rank matrix representations where you can um, uh, reconstruct the low rank, uh, uh, you can obtain a low rank reconstruction of your original input matrix uh, without actually making that low rank reconstruction. So if you were to you know, multi, uh, uh, take the cross product, product of the rotation and components in order to do your uh, standard uh, reconstruction, uh, you would have to make a dense matrix uh, that might be too large to fit in memory, but with a low rank matrix, uh, that, that actual calculation is delayed until you actually need the values. Uh, so that's quite useful for, um, uh, uh, compute, uh, for obtaining a matrix that you can use in downstream procedures without actually uh, constructing a dense array. Uh, and again, that's another delayed array backend. So, so uh, fiddling around with delayed array, uh, 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 delayed array seeds was quite uh, fun. So um, Irve, if you're on that call, that was, if you're on this call, this was a job well done. Um, uh, and yeah, again, um, all of this is parallelizable. Uh, so again, we can, you know, if the, a lot of this, a lot of the SVD algorithms under the hood work with matrix multiplications. So, uh, using delayed arrays uh, framework, we can mul uh, parallelize the matrix multiplications by any parallelization scheme that you might encounter. Um, there's still a bit of work there to make the uh, delayed array parallelization, uh, parallelization efficient, but I think um, uh, I think that's relatively easily solved. Um, so, yeah. So again, um, yeah, some uh, biasy singular. Um, it's, it's just uh, something to get um, uh, something that allows us to get uh, to do these SVDs in an interchangeable way without having to rewrite uh, package code every time we decide to add a new algorithm. Um, and this is currently in the bioconductor uh, submission queue. Um, so that's that's in progress. And when that gets in, Scran and SCADA will also be updated to use um, to use BIC singular uh, instead of having to manually hack around um, to to switch between approximate and exact approaches. Okay. Oh, I should mention that none of these things have been benchmarked yet, but Casper uh, is going to talk about that next, so um, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to him. Uh, okay. Onto my onto my other children. Um, so, uh, Beachmat, uh, as uh, 
uh, Stephanie uh, mentioned briefly, um, uh, is a in interface that allows us to, uh, that provides agnostic uh, access to matrix data from C++, uh, um, basically allowing R packages to use C++ code that can accept any type of input matrix, so ordinary matrices, sparse matrices, HDF5 matrices, and so on. Uh, so that's that's what Beachmap was originally designed to do, and we, we, we developed that some time ago with um, uh, Mike Smith and Hervé. Um, so what we've done recently is to add native C++ support for community-defined representations. So basically, if you are a package developer and you decide that you have a, you have a matrix representation that you really like, what you can do is you can write uh, in your own package uh, some C++ code that Beachmap will recognize when it encounters your matrix representation in some other package's C++ code. So what Beachmap then does is that it then uses your C++ routines from your package in order to access data from your matrix representation. So um, instead of having to go back out to R, all of this is now handled within C++ for any arbitrary matrix that the developer can be bothered to write a C++ backend for. Um, so this is pretty cool. So it goes via R's, um, uh, it goes via R's dynamic linking framework. Um, so it allows basically, you know, if you decide you want to write your own matrix representation for a specific format, you can provide us with a C++ backend and Beachmap will recognize it and it will, uh, it will use it. Uh, for increased efficiency of C++ code that encounters your package. Um, so that, that is, uh, I didn't think this was possible, but it was, so I did it. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, two minutes, okay, right, great, okay, because, um, yes, so that's, that's all the bioconduct, that's all the stuff I was formally paid for uh, to, to work on this grant, uh, but I, I also get paid by other uh, HCA funding sources, and it's sort of hard to figure out who pays for what, but given that, you know, it, at the end of the day, I always do HCA bioconductor related stuff, I'll just talk about this as well. So, uh, uh, Bachelor is a package for single cell batch correction. Kevin, I know you're on this course, so Kevin came up with this name, so it's pretty cool. Um, so, the idea here is much like with the other package, uh, with, with BIC Singular and BIC Neighbors, is to provide interoperable wrappers for different methods, uh, different batch correction methods. Uh, and that allows us to switch, that allows users to switch easily between different batch correction methods, um, depending on the different performance or to compare different methods on their data or so on. Uh, it also improves some existing MNN methods and it builds off these two packages that I talked about earlier. Uh, compare single cell is a workflow for comparative single cell RNA seq data analysis. So we're looking at instead of trying to instead of just getting one sample and clustering it, we want to look for you know differences between samples. So like what happens to cell populations when you uh, knock out a gene or when you treat with a drug or so on. So that provides a lot more biological power for interpreting single cell experiments. Uh, droplet utils. Um, uh, so uh, the the this empty drops. Um, uh, function that we developed in the, one of the HCA hackathons is quite widely used now for uh, 10x genomics data. Uh, so I've done a bit of work there with getting a consistent random number generator for um, uh, when um, you parallelize the use of empty drops. Um, so that, that took a bit of effort, but it's now done. And more generally, some dimensional, dimensionality reduction speed up. So for example, uh, I made some PR pull requests to RTSNI and to uh, UWAT. Uh, for, for UMAP uh, in order to um, get those scalable for big single cell data sets. Um, so uh, uh, there, there's a lot of package develop other package developers that I could shout out here, um, but I'm probably running out, out of time, so I won't. Uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, thanks to HCA and um, uh, Cancer Research UK for, uh, for giving me your office. Um, yeah. Thanks very much, uh, Aaron. Uh, We'll switch now to Casper Hansen. Do you want to unmute yourself? And... 